Fort McHenry wetland. It's a mitigated wetland, which means that when the harbor tunnels, the I-95 tunnels were built, they used up wetland and also in, in uh, developing the South Locust Point Marine Terminal, which is over here to the right, uh, they had to build a wetland to replace wetland that was lost. So this is about 10 acres or so of marshland, which is man-made. And then there's a berm that runs along the west side of it, which is forested. And uh, that was built to prevent storm surge from entering the Port of Baltimore. The purpose is to try out different native species of uh, marsh grasses to see how well they do in competition with some of the invasive species that are here, like Phragmites, and to see whether they can use the knowledge they learn here and, and apply it to other marsh areas along the bay in restoring wetlands. Here are the Canada geese. They're permanent residents here also. There's about 300 of them that are non-migratory. And uh, they nest around the bay in the, in the marshes. I had a nest here this spring. And uh, then they'll, uh, they'll graze on the fort grounds on the grass. In, the, in October, they'll be joined by migratory geese from Canada. And uh, so the flock will grow to several hundred more. Here's what's left of the Canada goose nest, and you can see the eggs. There are a couple that didn't hatch. What happened was, uh, some years ago, people wanted to have Canada geese, perhaps on a golf course pond, or in a park, public park. Uh, they clipped the wings so they couldn't migrate. Uh, those birds raised young, and because the parents could not lead them on a migratory trip. They never learned to go north or to go south. They don't, they've never learned to migrate and consequently they've raised families here too and although they can fly quite well, they don't, they, they don't move. It's a quiet time of the year. So you really have to look carefully to find wildlife here. Uh, most of the birds are not singing any longer as they did in the spring. Uh, they're molding their feathers and they're just fattening up and getting ready for the migration to start in September and October. So mostly we have to look for movement of birds. Bird flying or moving around in the branches of the tree. These are mallards that stay here the year round and they are currently molting their feathers and so the males look very much like the females. It's called the eclipse plumage because they drop their flight feathers and they're uh, subject to predation but they stay pretty close to the marsh and places that they can hide out during the day. Here's a cormorant, yeah. What's interesting about double-crested cormorants in uh, Japan, there's a species of cormorant found in the Sea of Japan, and it's used by fishermen to catch fish for them. They capture the cormorant, they put a ring around its neck so it can't swallow the fish, they take it out at night after it's been tamed and, and trained, set them up on the gunnels of the boat, hang a lantern over the bow which will shine on the water and attract the fish, pick up a cormorant and slip it into the water with the ring on. It'll catch the fish and bring it back up into the boat. The fisherman gives a re reward to the cormorant and removes the ring from its neck, takes the fish that it's caught and puts it in his creel, ready to sell. These with the wing spread are drying their wings. Uh, unlike ducks, they can spend only so much time in the water fishing, and then they have to get out because their feathers get somewhat uh, waterlogged. That's a common water snake. Uh, if you pick them up, they have a gland which they secrete a, a foul-smelling odor. That's one of their protections. 
you, know, you have to scrub your hands up. It looks like he's foraging for food. This is a butterfly garden. And we've identified some 35 or 40 different species of butterflies here. So and these are all native plants that are found in the state of Maryland that will attract butterflies. That's a butterfly. It's, a, it's called a fritillary. Fritillaries make up a group of butterflies of many different species, and I don't know what that particular one is. This just happens to be a weather station that uh, we put in completely automated so that the technicians in the aquarium can sit at their computers and bring up the information about the current weather conditions here. And it has a battery pack and solar panels, so batteries are charged during the day to run it all through the nighttime hours or on cloudy days. But this records all of the weather data, humidity, temperature, wind direction, speed, and so on, uh, precipitation, uh, every 15 minutes. One of the biggest problems that we have here is debris that comes in with tides and the wind and whatnot. Uh, we're hoping to educate people to uh, to pick up their trash and not let it come down the storm drains. What they throw out of their uh, boats when they're fishing and what they uh, throw into the gutter in suburbia eventually with rainwater will come down the storm drain system and end up here in the middle branch and then we get it. And it costs a lot of money and a lot of time to, to clean it up. So 